Hello and welcome, my name is Kevin. This is Do It For Bruce. We have another creative time lapse to expose you all to. This time I've gone through and painstakingly made each and every one of the duchies in the game into a kingdom. All 674 duchies have now been given their very own kingdom with a ruler who has around 4,500 gold. You might be asking how I created this monstrosity and the answer is mods in conjunction with debug mode. The driving factor behind this time lapse is to glean information on the duchy kingdoms. Will large duchy kingdoms outperform small ones? Are Christians going to do better than Muslims? Will the Mongols come in and take over all these little kingdoms? Hopefully some of these questions will get answered over the 600 years of in-game time. But before we make some predictions, I humbly ask that if you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing to the channel. My first prediction? is that Bohemia will be one of the more stronger, powerful kingdoms after 600 years. They start with a decent amount of land and development, plus they have a gold mine. Number two, Christians have usually had a strong showing in the 1066 start, so I believe they will be the more dominant faith. And I also think that Catholics will outdo the Orthodox. Finally, the most spoken language worldwide will either be Greek or High German. With that, let's see what transpires in 600 years of madness. I'll see you at the end with a recap. It's been 600 years and we have a more consolidated map. Uh, we've got some big Strayman, Strayman, Strayman. Uh, we have a Provence, we have some Sussex, and then over here in India we have a couple of, we have the Nasika uh, Kingdom, oh, Empire actually, uh, and up here 
this little corner looks like we got the golden horde left surprisingly enough they've kept on keeping on until uh yeah let us first get out of the way our predictions my first prediction was bohemia would be powerful and it looks like they are not very large however they are pretty uh strong they have 120 000. they actually are in number one first place and then after that it is the where is this uh it looks like a ghanaian uh king tatrid uh kingdom is a russian muslim kingdom and then our second one was who would have the most uh i think it was who would be more prolific and it came down to i said christians would be as a whole and i said catholics will outdo the orthodox which they have but the orthodox did a pretty good job of taking over some little provinces here and there i was surprised to see that they expanded all the way in this empire really really expanded and i'm wondering if it's due to their just overall yeah development doing well or yeah, because like this area is not that well developed, but this empire is massive, but they're not as strong. Maybe because they've been fighting in several different wars. Yeah, it looks like they're currently actually fighting the Bohemians. This Jain religion has subdued most of India. Tangris has made an appearance and then Metroidism and yeah, very interesting stuff there. Culture, let's see. Uh, Greeks actually somehow stayed together for the most part. We have some changing of Greeks, but usually when the Byzantines aren't around, they are more likely to make diverged cultures and all that. We have Italian-Hungarian, which is fun. alpine Swabian, that's pretty normal. Anglo-Saxon, Welsh-Anglo-Saxon, lovely. Anglo-Gaelic, Scots-Scots, Scots, Outer Hebrides, uh, culture, butter, Bedouin, we have Egyptians, we have Nubian Sao, we have Ethiopians. Uh, nothing too crazy over here. We've got Mongolians as tradition. We got some Mongolians over here with different Mongolians of different stuff. Permo, Bashariq, uh, and yeah. They have done some changing, but for the most part, it's not as crazy as I thought it would be. Like I assumed a lot of the nations, the kingdoms would, as soon as they uh, were able to, they would uh, switch over their culture because they, they had enough prestige and stuff to diverge. Probably has the most kingdoms is our emperor over here with one, 22, 23, 24, 24 kingdoms under his belt. It seems like one of the more prolific ones. And then this guy probably has only five vassals, surprisingly enough, and most of them are under probably, looks like a lot of them are under his son's control. Speaking of kingdoms, let's look at the map mode and see if if we had some changes uh, abound. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of gobbling over here, some goblin over here. This got all changed around out of all of our kingdoms all 674 of them only one two three empires were formed surprisingly enough which one is this the Ashuran. uh the mongols also didn't do as well as i thought they would i thought they were going to come in and just churn out and then finally i think we should look at court language i did not expect that <laughs> that is uh interesting shaz turk almost lingua franca spoken by Ogs culture let's go like Ogs, Ogs Og, I think that's how you pronounce this yeah Shazturk is theirs Cumans got Shazturk Kimmick very interesting that yeah I think that's all we have for today look out for later this week we have a stream coming where I play in the this save file at the beginning with a random king and just jump from king to king after one dies i'll move on to another king and see how well i can do in a land full of duchy kingdoms i hope you have a good rest of your day and i will see you in the next one ciao